Firstly, congratulations. Well, a thank you very much. It is an enormous honour. I'm really thrilled, you I, know. I bet you are. And I suppose it's one of those moments where it allows you to take a reflective step back and think of all of these incredible things you've done. Have you had that moment? Well, I have. I mean, it just, you know, it is many, many decades, never mind years. <laughs> so, of course, the memories do keep coming back and, uh, and they're very happy memories because I've always chosen work that interested me. So I was never bored and I was never treading water. I was always going where I wanted to be. So I was fortunate. Yes, and it's just wonderful. <coughs> and it will be a, a huge affair, obviously, at the, the Royal Festival Hall. I mean, it's just, it's just a wonderful... That's a bit daunting. It's, yes, it's a, it's a special evening, honestly. Yeah, a very proud moment. Um, looking back, as you say, decades of work, but there must be moments that are considered highlights. What would they be for you? I have to say that probably I, interviewing Nelson Mandela, as the, I was the first person to do a long interview with Nelson Mandela just after he'd come off Robin Island. And it was very, very special. He gave a press conference to the world's press, of course, <clears throat> but then he flew to Sweden where he was meeting up with Walter Sisulu and the ANC and they were, the family had gathered in Sweden. And, but we had an in with someone who was related to them and they said, we'll fix it. And so I flew to Stockholm to meet him and I had an hour of his time wow. just entirely talking. And we uh, didn't edit, we just transmitted the whole thing because it was so special. Of course. In those moments, you know, he'd only been out for 24 hours, 36 hours. It's incredible. And again, it is, it's not until you look back with a reflective eye that you really appreciate the importance, actually, That's of That's right. Like he that. was about to become the leader, you know, and he'd been 27 years in, in Rob, on Robin Island, which he talked about with enormous interest. I mean, he, he learned to speak Afrikaans when he was there. He made friends with his warder. Um, and he uh, stayed close to all the other prisoners who taught each other skills that they would need when they came out of Robin Island, skills that they would need to run the country mm. because they sort of knew that their hour would come. Yeah. And I had a great sense too that I was meeting someone whose hour had come. That was very special. Really incredible. Oh, and we talk about all of these, these wonderful people that you had connections with. Sir David Attenborough being another big name in there because he was actually your boss at one point. He was my he? boss. <laughs> David Attenborough was the controller of BBC Two until he realised that he didn't like being in administration. <laughs> and he was a very indulgent um, um, administrator, controller, because we used to, on late night lineup, we used to have all the pop groups of the 60s come in to record in the afternoons. I mean, the Stones and the Who and Elton and so on. And they would all come in <coughs> with their customary attributes and certain <laughs> smells would drift out of the studio. Um, and David Attenborough once took the editor aside and said, there's a certain herbal smell that is drifting along the corridor from your studio. Unless you do something about it, you'll be in trouble. And that was all he said. He didn't say any more than that. That was all he had to say. That's all he had to say. <laughs> but it could have been a row, you know. It could yeah. have been headlines in the papers and so on. But David was very discreet and we mended our ways. Uh -huh. and, and do you still see him? Do you still meet I see him. And... Yes, I saw him at his birthday. I see him at um, occasions. Mm -hmm. um, we always say to each other, are you still working? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> and, we, and also, as David said, and I say too, but what happens when you stop work? You know, if you love your work, what a disappointment it would be to have to retire. <laughs> so I've not retired and he's not retired. No, absolutely. Well, well, gosh, we can't, I can't imagine television without either of you. Um, and last night, like we say, we saw you again, Portrait Artist of the Year, which is just a wonderful programme, Joan. I, I find it calming to watch. Do you paint? I paint, not brilliantly. I meet people all the time who say, I'm watching your programme, I'm watching how they do it and how they put the the palette knife or the brush or the pastel or the charcoal on the page and I'm just watching I might have a go that's wonderful <laughs> that's exactly it's what it's about and very briefly I have to ask you you are your religious Pilates fan you think Pilates is the key to everything I do. don't you? I do it twice a week okay I read that like yesterday and thought that's it I'm starting <laughs> <laughs> I'm going tomorrow yes absolutely this is it you've done it for all of these years I've done it for 25 years that's fantastic. I've done it before people knew what it was and people would stop me and say you do something called 
pilots. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? And I'd say, well, it's a very unusual exercise routine. And, of course, it, uh, people do it in great droves now. Yeah. It's very, very good. Do you do it? I don't really at all, you see. So Painting? Painting and Pilates. And I'm going to change your life. <laughs> yeah, I'm indeed, yes. This interview's changed everything. <laughs> Jim, what a delight it is to meet you this morning. And congratulations. 50 Thank you. years. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Have a wonderful night.